Well, joining us right now is a Nigerian pharmacist and professor, Mujisola Adeyeye, also the Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC. She joins us via Zoom on the program. We'd we'll like joining us on the program as, of course, we celebrate uh, this very important day, especially uh, women in leadership uh, under the COVID-19 world. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. All right. I want to begin, Prof, um, by asking first about the, the vaccine, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. How did NAFDAQ arrive at the safety and efficacy of it? And this is on what, um, perhaps what we've heard, because we understand that COVID Shield with patent from uh, patent right from Oxford AstraZeneca was only tested among uh, the ages of between 18 and 65. Yes, um, NAFDAQ has been on this uh, journey uh, since April of 2020, and uh, we've been studying uh, with others uh, about the vaccines that were going to come down the road uh, later in the year 2020. And uh, we uh, started following up as soon as the first vaccine was uh, approved. Uh, we got the assessment report of uh, the vaccine, the first one, Pfizer-BioNTech, uh, to know what they actually uh, reported from the assessment, that is from US FDA. And uh, we kept following uh, because we, are all, we were also waiting for the dossier, which is the application package. Uh, we had to run after the dossier, uh, meaning we weren't waiting at all. Uh, for the manufacturer to bring it. Uh, we went after them, uh, went through the Central Africa uh, or Africa representative of uh, AstraZeneca. And uh, they finally connected us to Serum Institute uh, in India uh, through meetings, a couple of meetings, they then agreed that they, should, they would send us the dossier. And our work began or continued rather after we got the, the dossier Having uh, done some preliminary work uh, from other people's assessment, other agencies' assessment. So we got the dossier February 10, uh, and uh, it is all about science. Uh, there is nothing there that doesn't involve science. Uh, so we have our COVID, excuse me, our uh, COVID-19 vaccine committee uh, together and uh, they did an excellent job. Uh, it, took, it, it took five working days uh, to review and why it was so fast was because we use what is called reliance, uh, meaning other uh, matured, more matured uh, agencies have already you know, approved like UK, like uh, European Union. And we got the assessment reports just like we did for Pfizer BioNTech. And that formed the basis of why we should do the expedited review. That was how it took uh, five days, five working days uh, to review. And uh, the rest is uh, history. Uh, well, <laughs> the rest is history, uh, but we needed to get the vaccines into the country. And the uh, NAVDAC has to uh, actually exempt uh, the vaccines from uh, testing in India because Serum Institute is in India. So we have to give an exemption because we put uh, a hold on any product that is coming from India or China just to be sure that we do pre-shipment testing. But because of the approval that we gave to the AstraZeneca vaccine, we gave in what is called CRIA exemption. So that facilitated uh, the vaccines from uh, getting to Nigeria. And uh, then our work continued because we have to now check the vaccines in uh, through our port inspection directorate uh, to ensure that uh, the clearance is well done. And we also used uh, what is called track and trace or a GS1 technology driven uh, traceability to follow the vaccine using barcoding. Meaning when we check the vaccines in, uh, we did the scanning. Uh, it took about 10 hours to, to scan about uh, 8,000 uh, boxes uh, for our staff to finish uh, all the barcoding checking. 
uh, which means we have a reference uh, uh, template. Uh, therefore, if any of the vaccines travel to anywhere in the country, we will follow it uh, based on uh, the track and trace. So we've been very, very busy uh, since uh, the arrival of the vaccines. And it's not just the vaccines you know, being track and trace. We have to monitor any side effect from uh, uh, you know, soreness in the arm to maybe a slight fever or tiredness or whatever. We need to document it because that is what all re regulatory agencies in the world are doing. Because bear in mind, we gave emergency use authorization. Uh, it is not a full licensure. So we have to con continue to collect data with all our colleagues, regulatory agencies across the world so that we compare data and accumulate data to make sure that the vaccines on the long run can be licensed. So the pharmacovigilance or safety monitoring continues uh, as we speak. All right, Prof, we're, we're going to come back to you, especially asking if indeed there were tests carried out with the variants of concern uh, that we're seeing around the world. Uh, but this is also uh, to say that uh, breaking news, uh, Ogun State has become the first state to take delivery of the COVID-19 vaccines. Um, this is, of course, receiving its own portion. We understand that it's about 50,000 doses uh, of the vaccines that it is is getting at the moment. So that's Ogun State there receiving its first dose of the COVID shield vaccine. Still on the vaccine and vaccination, when a drug is reproduced, um, what the Serum Institute in India are doing, are there not bound to be variabilities which affects the standard quality and efficacy? And this is talking about uh, COVID shield. Yes. Uh... Serum Institute of India got the license or sub-license from AstraZeneca Oxford University uh, to reproduce the vaccines. And AstraZeneca Oxford University uh, gave them all the documents that they needed or did what is called technology transfer. And Serum Institute is one of the biggest manufacturers of uh, vaccines in the world. Uh, so they know what they are doing. And uh, I, I don't think it was a big problem or big issue for them to follow the procedure and uh, maybe adjust here and there in order to be able to reproduce what was given to them, uh, the procedures rather, and what was given to them by uh, AstraZeneca uh, Oxford University. Uh, so the test, you know, is, is all science. Uh, you follow the instructions. Most likely you will get the same results. If the instructions are not followed, uh, very likely they, they will not get it. But Serum Institute, I believe, uh, got it very well. So if we look at the variants of concern, the B1351, the P1, the B117, and even the, the Nigerian one, the B1525, I mean, the common mutation they share is the E484K, uh, believed to enhance the variants of concern to even escape vaccine triggers, um, antibodies. If this is present in Nigeria, did NAVDAC test um, COVID shield against any of the variants? Actually, uh, that is not what NAVDAC does. There are specialty labs in the, in the country. You have NIMA in Lagos, NCDC, and you have the Center of Excellence in uh, Redeemers University in Ede uh, for genomic uh, testing. So those three labs have been working on testing for the variants in Nigeria, and they found out that uh, uh, Nigeria has the B117, uh, the UK variant, uh, that we don't have the South African variant, uh, at least not yet. Uh, and the South African variants uh, are the ones that actually reduce the efficacy of the vaccine. The UK variants do not have impact on the efficacy of the vaccines. So to answer your question, NAVDAC does different types of tests. Uh, 
those three labs do the genomic. They have to do the genomic sequencing to find out uh, the type of mutation or the type of variants that are coming up and uh, uh, to know whether such variants will affect the efficacy or not. But thus far, uh, what they found out is that the efficacy of the vaccine in Nigeria as of today will not be impacted by the variants. We understand that about 80 to 90 percent of Nigerians um, are asymptomatic. Uh, reports show that COVID shield with patent right from AstraZeneca is not effective at preventing mild to moderate infections based on the South Africa study uh, and, this, um, and the others. I mean, um, so if this really is the case, um, of what importance is it then um, to sort of roll out uh, COVID shield? Well, uh, the efficacy of any of these uh, vaccines, again, like we said before, we depend on whether the variants are impacting or not. Uh, but for COVID shield, just like any other vaccines, uh, in South Africa, it reduced the efficacy in Nigeria, at least for, as of today, uh, there is not going to have any impact on the efficacy. Uh, but uh, because uh, most of the people, or many of the people actually, that have uh, the COVID-19 uh, infection uh, are not symptomatic, they are asymptomatic, uh, that doesn't mean that they should not get the vaccine, or if I get, if I get you right. Uh, because the, what the vaccine does is to protect against falling ill, you know, meaning getting to the hospital. You, one can still be infected if one doesn't have all, you know, doesn't have the precautions, the non-pharmaceutical precautions using uh, the face masks, washing hands, washing of hands and social distance. Uh, the person that gets in, uh, vaccinated may still be infected. If that person is not well protected or he doesn't protect himself or herself, However, that person will not uh, get uh, seriously ill. Uh, they may you know, get a little bit, but it's not going to be, uh, no, feel a little, bit, a little bit unwell, but it's not going to result in hospitalization. And that is a big thing because the way the, each person handles this virus is different. Uh, some people may have it and then they just fight it off. Some may have it and then it may result in death. So it's better to have one's uh, protection by getting the vaccination. All right, Prof, the final question, and we have just, you have about one minute to answer it. It's uh, slightly two in one. Um, one is, would you recommend the COVID shield, uh, the pay with patent right from AstraZeneca for uh, people aged 65 and above? That's a yes or no uh, answer. And the second one is, states have started getting, um, you know, the portions like Ubum State. What are your expectations as to prevent waste and, of course, um, for storage? Yes, uh, people above 65 can get the vaccine. There have been a, a few reports here and there that is not effective for people above 65, but those have been reversed uh, because people, you know there was there was, I believe there were a lot of testing that was that took place and uh, they found that over 65 and above uh, had good immune response. Uh, so people above 65, yes, they can get it. Your second question, please. Sorry. The second one is with regards to states that are receiving uh, the, the vaccines, what are your expectations to storage and preventing waste? Actually, uh, the federal government doesn't, take, doesn't send vaccines to any state until that state is well prepared, until they confirm that the state is well prepared. So Ogun State was sent its own portion because... They, they have confirmed that Ogun State is well prepared. Well prepared in terms of having the cold chain uh, maintenance, meaning they have the freezers, they have the backup just in case uh, there is no power. So uh, the federal government will all, only send to states that are prepared so that they can avoid the waste. All right. 
We appreciate your time on the program, Professor Majusula Deye, Director General, NAFDAC. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you so much and have a nice evening. To you as well.